this is the stock market and I am beating it actually I beat it again by 2x 13% versus 4% I know it's less than last time but how did I do it this time measuring directly from VOO the market it went up 16% then how did I say I'm beating the market? Hmm. Compared to my last portfolio update video, I trimmed three positions and added two. What changed my mind? What holdings did I swap? Fed holds off rate high, yes, but says two more are coming later this year. What? Holding off is a good sign, generally speaking. But what does that mean to me? How does that change my investing strategy? On the top of that, the generative AI boom is really blooming. Does that mean it's the prime time to buy AI stocks? What can I buy? So many interesting things going on, right? In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to use the most user-friendly language to answer all of the above. First, I will go over my investment portfolio update with my top three learnings. Then we're going to take a look at the two news, the interest rate pause, and AI boom and their implications to my overall direction and strategy. Lastly, I will show you how I use my design thinking to iterate my strategy moving forward, knowing my past performances and those news. This will be another very informative and transparent video, so grab your favorite drink and let's get into it, y'all. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Let's start with the indisputable, undeniable facts, numbers. Hence, the portfolio update. Here's a table of performances of my investment portfolio, broken down and factoring gains and dividends and options. These are real money for my real Robinhood account. So clearly, I'm beating the market by a wide margin, 13% versus 4%. However, there are two puzzling questions. First, if you just measure the year-to-day performance for VOO, it's 16%. How did my VOO only give me 4%? Short answer is DCA dollar cost average sucks. Long answer is I have been dollar cost averaging in, meaning I'm buying a little bit every day. Because of the overall uptrend, DCA will average up my VOO purchase price. That's why you see my average cost here is 391, not 350, which made my overall return from VOO a lot lower. And that leads to my very first piece of learning this year. In an uptrend market, dollar cost average sucks and lump sum investing is better buy more buying early is better let time do the heavy lifting plus i'm just so lazy i should have just let time do the work for me i don't want to work since the buying method between my voo and everything else i hold is the same both are dca that should be the accurate way of comparing performances which are four percent versus 13 percent that explains how my 13 percent is still beating the market by 2x despite the year of date performance of voo is 16 percent so back to this table there's a minus sign on my jeppy that's because i cleared out this position this deserves some explanation because i made some videos before that talking about how i believe in jeppy dividend investing and retiring early those are still true in fact i still find jeppy a very interesting income fund to hold i don't mind owning it however i realized two things which you can see in my learning doc jeppy returns about eight percent dividends yield every year and i can see it in two ways number one i see the eight percent is the growth rate but if I see it that way, that means JP becomes a growth stock and JP will grow a lot slower than VOO in a long bull market run. Therefore, it doesn't make sense to treat it that way. Another way to look at it is 8% as the income rate. It works really well for Warren Buffett's 4 million shares of Coca-Cola, which is worth $24 billion. With its 3-ish percent dividend yield, it gives Warren Buffett 700 million dividend income every year. That works for him. If I have 24 billion, I don't mind putting it in Jeppy, but I don't. So I just got rid of it. For my 20% stable staples. What a fun name. Here are the adjustments that I made. I got rid of Ulta Beauty and Kroger and swapped in Vici and Broadcom. Vici has both the characteristics of stable growth in capital depreciation and a very good dividend yield. So that is a replacement for both Older Beauty and Jeppy. I can't afford a house and do house hacking, but I can buy REITs and collect rent like Jeppy. That's still fun. There's a very good video talking about the history of Vici and how much competitive advantage they have in the properties 
in Vegas. Then with Kroger, I swapped it with Broadcom, which is a company that people on Wall Street don't talk a whole lot about. Going on their product listing, you can see a lot of components that build the world that we're living in. Wi-Fi, data center, networking, semiconductor software. Plus, I used to live with somebody who worked at Broadcom, so I do learn a thing or two and know what they're good at. And that is my competitive advantage of knowing the competitive advantage of Broadcom. And speaking of Broadcom, that leads to my another piece of learning. Tech companies like this are actually consumer staples. Computing micro wireless through cloud integration solutions, infrastructure data center, sound very fancy and high tech. But if those are the things that we use, we depend on on a daily basis and will demand more of it over time. Tech is just a label. Their true identity is consumer staples. Think about fridges and vacuum cleaners in the 1950s. Consumerism, they were fancy luxury goods. Do you still have a fridge and vacuum at home? Plus all the recent investments in generative AI. It will demand more networking, computing, data center capacities. Broadcom has that competitive advantage in being a top supplier. That's why I was confident adding Broadcom to my holdings. And that's also my portfolio update. Now let's go to the real world and look into the macro environment. Interest rate is still high. 5% is high. At a similar point in 2008, interest rate went up, stocks went down. A very simple basic economic connection, which you saw it play out in 2022. Interest rate stays flat, hints of reversal can be near the horizon, which could be better for stocks. There are likely more and slower interest rate hikes, but overall like a big, big, big picture, that is good news. One bonus learning from the beat up stock market last is that hedge fund would oversell during crisis, which makes retail tell investors like us can excel even more leading to many companies being undervalued this is exactly what a hedge fund want because at that time they can swoop in buy and make a profit we technically witnessed that in 2022 hedge funds sold as interest rates rose driving retail investors panic sell boom bear market then in 2023 hedge fund took advantage of that semi-artificial downtrend and started buying making a sweet profit in this run-up that's interest rate next is generative ai the recent development of chat gpt mid journey and their friends it made me wonder is it ai boom or ai gloom what i can say is there's definitely some breakthrough in ai in mid journey chat gpt firefly stable diffusion which they have demonstrated the new usages and opportunities is there a bubble i think it depends on again the fundamentals if those ai investments can generate true revenues and profits no bubble if not we will find out for sure when it pops there are always opportunities when a certain trend emerges and this time is ai and that's how it can relate to my your our investing direction after doing some homework, research, learning, assessment, there are relevant companies to keep on the radar. Ones that deal with compute, data center, bandwidth, networking, which is the same learning that I got from Broadcom and why I bought it. Other examples, other companies would be like Microsoft, Amazon, Google for their cloud services, Nvidia, Broadcom, the chips, semiconductors, Equinix, networking, Adobe, some consumer apps, PlayStation, even like Meta, so on and so forth. I bet with some research, you can find out a few more. So chapter four, knowing all those macro news, here's the fun part. You get to see how I use design thinking to iterate on my strategy and exactly what I'm doing moving forward. With the first learning of lump sum is better than DC in an uptrend market, plus knowing interest rates being paused, slower, fewer and slower interest rate hike. In June, I already started to buy all my holdings in my portfolio whenever I have money instead of DCA. That should up my performance even more. This is also in line with the macro trend, interest rate pause and slower rates. It's good for the market, meaning more likely for uptrend. Confirming lump sum over DCA is a better way to do it. With this bonus learning, I have a very simple heuristic that I would try. If the fundamentals of a company are still good, and if it drops 20% or reach like 52 weeks low, I'm gonna go all in, buy, 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 buy a lot more, lump sum buy. And that's it, one very simple execution rule. And to update my investment categories, these are the ones that I have, Euro, Tesla, Apple, and my 20% stable staples. It's simpler, cleaner, and more streamlined, which I like. I have been sitting a lot in cash, maybe 30%-ish, which was way too high for this uptrend market. 
I will start to buy more and try to keep it down to 15 to 20 percent max, on par with Warren Buffett's cash reserve. I will buy some CD to take advantage of the high interest environment, especially the hinted two more hikes. The rest of the cash will be sitting in my Robinhood account, which I have Robinhood Gold, which gives me the 4.65% interest rate for my uninvested cash. It's pretty good to be honest. And speaking of Robinhood, it's still my favorite brokerage so far for its two-day early paycheck so lump sum earlier and automated investing. So I don't have to look at it. I will let it do the work for me. If you don't have it yet, use my referral code to download it and get one free stock up to $200. Great deal. And lastly, crypto real estate and art i'm not touching crypto end of story for real estate i couldn't afford a house but i have lychee so i'm kind of in it with art i talked about masterworks before what i found out was they have high commissions and low liquidity so i'll put this on hold for now one thing i did not get to cover is option trading that's how i get to boost my gains from my tesla apple and jetty by doing selling costs selling put and wheel strategy if you're not familiar with those and want to learn more, great news because I've used my best craft and design thinking to capture those in these videos for you. Check them out right there. Like and subscribe to help support this very small channel and keep using design to square up your finances. See you on the next video. Cheers.